On October 16th and 17th, I went to the Cotiso Conference in Seoul. It's a little silly that I spent money and time and effort traveling all the way up there because I may never teach again after the next three weeks. But I love conferences. I just really love hearing people's ideas, especially people who are highly respected as experts in their field. And those are the sort of people who are only easy to catch at a conference. So I think of conferences as a big idea catching net that I just never pass up the opportunity to open because it opens my mind. The way I studied English was a little unique because ever since I was very young, I would talk in English with my mother and have English conversations with my mother. And um, she made me read a lot of storybooks in English. Um, and so she tried to make me get used to the English language. And so every day she would like talk to me in English. Can you, can you please explain this in English? Or she tried to make me speak in English. Like, do you want water or do you want something to eat? Um, and I was the MC for the English Corner in an educational program for toddlers called Popopo in NBC since I was four for a few years. And when I was seven, a book of my English diaries and essays was published. It's called Am I One of a Kind? Um, I believe that working with many native speakers at the broadcasting station from a young age, it has also helped me become fluent in English. So, and another method I Use was participating in several English competitions or contests, such as IBT TOEFL and IET, or the International English Test, and several English speaking competitions that I entered from a young age. And I especially like formal debate and participating in English debate competitions, like British parliamentary debate. Um, I believe that working hard to yield good results in such competitions has helped me improve my English abilities and it has made me who I am now. So I have been exposed to more opportunities because of English, um, including this wonderful opportunity to stand here and speak at the Cotiso Conference. And I have been able to make many, many friends and acquaintances from several different countries. I will use English as my tool to communicate with people around the world and also as my guide to making my dreams come true. And, and thank you for listening. The thing this girl said that really stood out to me was that English was her ticket to the world. Her in to knowing people and places and things that people who don't know English just don't have access to. And that made me realize just how lucky I am, how we all are, who are native English speakers. Because English is becoming the lingua franca of the world. And most things worth reading or watching or listening to are either created primarily in English or translated shortly thereafter. So just by the fact that we speak English, we have this whole treasure trove of all the world's creativity at our fingertips. Asian Federation of Youth, AYF, uh, their conference is also here this year. AYF was founded at PAC2 back in 1999 and it has been promoting international understanding through EFL for over 10 years. This year's AYF includes 40 students from 14 countries including Bangladesh, Cambodia, China, India, Indonesia, Japan, Korea, Myanmar, Philippines, Russia, Thailand and Vietnam. There were people there from all over the world, from every publishing company I've ever heard of, and then some. It was said that over 1,500 teachers attended. I hung out at the ATEC booth a few times during breaks. I think internal communications officer Russell was part of the display because I never saw him leave the table. And Vice President Darren said that they recruited over 50 people over the whole weekend. And since we are, especially Korean college students, are facing what we call communicative use of language, use of English more specifically, uh, even on campus. Yeah, they were talking, you know, that's, 
something that I have to be really good at because my major is English. And then he's uh, I mean, you know, he's an engineer. Uh, he's an engineer student. Uh, but then, uh, while we were studying, we were really sensitive about our own score. Uh, but then something else came up between between us. I mean, you you, you know it. <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> My favorite lecture was Andrew Finch's The Postmodern Language Teacher. This to me is very, very postmodern. This is tourism. Postmodern tourism. Look at that. This is what you see now if you go to Venice. Can you see the bridge of sides? My college professors instilled in me a weakness for postmodernism. In high school, I remember learning about it and thinking it was absolute bonkers something only people who have lived in the white tower of academia for most of their lives can truly appreciate. The trouble is, it would say it's not a something. It's a way of thinking about something. <laughs> Despite the fact that it refuses to be anything, but fluid ways of thinking that cannot be pinned down, I still think of it as a valid way of thinking about something. <laughs> because, you know, it makes you think harder and deeper than you would have otherwise. Lots of tourists go to Venice now and they say, where's the Bridge of Sides? And they say, oh, it's over there by the Coca-Cola poster. <laughs> <laughs> We're faced with an entirely new situation in which the goal of education, if we are to survive, is the facilitation of change and learning. The only person who's educated is the person who's learned how to learn person who's learned how to adapt and change. Education is itself going through profound changes in terms of purposes, contents, and methods. We all know this. We all know this is happening. Relativism is very important. Time, space, truth, and moral values are relative to the persons or groups holding them. There is no system which rests on entirely rational foundations. I don't care how objective you think you're being, but you are interpreting everything through your web of beliefs. What we do in the classroom is affected by who we are, the views we hold. Here we are then, web of beliefs. 1932, Gödel walks into a math mathematical conference and says, oh, by the way, every mathematical and scientific system is incomplete. Sorry about that. There is no absolute truth. There cannot be absolute truth. And of course, being a mathematical conference, everyone just did the maths and then agreed with him. <laughs> really? This is what's happening. We're finding out more and more about less and less. And we all know that EFL is dead. Hey, what if, what if this rainbow doesn't exist, and it's just in our imagination? Believe the rainbow. Taste the rainbow. I liked the smaller workshops where we could do some interactive exploration of theory, but the bigger lectures were really worthwhile, too. The senior the mother's prompts, which are so typical, say goodbye, say hello, and all these kinds of things. In this case, it's hold your hands, now say dear God, say I love you, say thank you, I want to be a good girl, projecting on her, say amen. And then there's this whole other set of um, speech acts related to the absent video daddy, say bye bye, say night night, say love you. And, um, and various kinds of attention getting, look at me, look at me, that sort of thing. So we see in this example, L1 mediated socialization into particular cultural, linguistic, and discursive practices. The identity of being a thankful, good Christian girl and daughter, uh, the ideologies of loving God, expressing thanks, and express expressing the intention to be good, and then expressions of affect, this kind of affective stance, I love you, amen, I promised you, and the kinds of intonation that go with that too. 
So this is an example of informal L1 socialization at home. The boy who's standing up says that someone likes, one of the little boys likes a little girl. So they said oh, he's this or that and the other thing, and, um, and, and, and he reveals this information. <laughs> Ultimately, what I took away from the weekend, one, a teacher's role is to make a teacher's role obsolete, to teach students how to learn, how to teach themselves. Two, students must assume responsibility for their own studies, their own learning. They have to become autonomous learners in order to really progress. Three, ESL teachers have to deal with things that no other kind of teacher has to deal with because language is so caught up, mixed up in and with culture. My teaching philosophy already includes an understanding of teaching as a self-perpetuating art, decoupaging onto students these ideas that we hope that they're going to, you know, take home and think about maybe change and use again later in some way. But what I added to my understanding is that we must also teach them how to think for themselves. Numbers one and two reflect that understanding. Number three just makes my heart sing because I feel like throughout my eight months here so far, I've been a minor spelunking in a dark cave with no light and finally, I hit gold just this past week. I've been teaching grammar because I believe that there is no other way to give students the confidence in speaking that they need than by helping them get a better grasp of a sentence, how a sentence is put together, step by step, i.e. parts of speech, i.e. grammar. Speech cannot be made without its parts. So I was teaching prepositions today and showing pictures and video to go along with prepositional phrases. So first I had the students fill in the blank in a sentence to describe a picture, like the guy is jumping over the car. Then we'd go to a YouTube video of Ghost Riding the Whip. <laughs> and pause halfway through to talk about he is on the car, he is next to the car, there is no one in the car. Suddenly, I got that little jump in my gut that I get when I write a poem or watch a vlog that I just finished making. Because at first I'd been sad that I don't have time in my curriculum this semester to teach my students like culture lessons. Like I used to do uh, a typical day in the life of a middle school student or American technology, how it's different than Korean technology, American food. But then I realized that I was using culture to teach grammar. And this was better. And you 